My name is Dale Solomon. Let me tell you about the twists and turns in my life. I can't say that I'm ashamed nor proud of everything I've done. Sometimes life makes you make tough decisions. I came from a loving but financially strapped family. I've got two sisters and two brothers. I'm the one in the middle. Since money was tight I've been working since I was a teenager. Even though I've been told I'm very intelligent, most of my jobs were grunt work, but they gave me spending money. While I was attending community school I sold sperm and blood to make ends meet. I met Celeste my sophomore year, and we eloped after six weeks of non-stop sex. She's a very creative lover, but her backdoor is completely off-limits. Not even touching is allowed. I never asked for an explanation. I worked a 32-hour-per-week job, which was just enough to get benefits. Although it cost me all of my spare time, I was taking 14 credit hours of night classes. Celeste was working as a clerical worker in an insurance office. Even with two incomes, the cost of schooling and life didn't allow for building any savings. The only way to survive was to keep your eyes focused on the elusive horizon. When money got to the point of being a showstopper, I, her we, decided that a short stint in the military would be beneficial. The perks in the GI Bill seemed like the best long-term solution. A month after I entered boot camp, Celeste informed me that she was pregnant. Her parents agreed to help with the baby when that time came. I was young. I know that's not an acceptable excuse. I was so devastated that it never occurred to me to check. We'd been married for two years when Celeste delivered our son. If it was a girl she would have been named Gloria. Since it was a boy, we had previously agreed upon Daryl Thomas. Less than a month later I was served with divorce papers. I was still deployed at the time. The petition for divorce sought neither alimony nor child support. Attached was a copy of the birth certificate. I didn't have a son named Daryl Thomas Solomon. Instead, the birth certificate named Celeste's co-worker, Wendell Truitt, as the father of the child. The child's name was Wendell Truitt Jr. There were no provisions for visitation as I was not the father of the child. My comrades convinced me that losing her was the best possible outcome. It was hard to argue against. Try telling that to my heart. Not once, since the day I was served with the divorce papers, had I spoken with Celeste. Don't get me wrong, it took a long time to rebuild my confidence and trust in women. But I did. I found a woman who truly loves me. Even so, we almost didn't make it. I met Dee at a neighborhood barbecue. She was the sister of one of the neighbors that I really didn't know all that well at that time. Although she had been to a few of these parties before, we'd never spent much time together. I was too shy, and still smarting from my divorce, to make the first move. D sensed my shyness and broke the ice. I hear you wore the uniform? Yes ma'am. You? No, just a civvy. How long have you been back? About nine months. Are you here alone today? Not just today. How about you? Yeah, footloose and fancy free. Just being sociable. Which house do you live in? Oh I'm not a neighbor, my sister is as she pointed to a woman who didn't look like anything like her. So what brings you here? But the twinkle in her eye you. Yeah right, I've seen you at a few of these gatherings. Oh I see, you're the only one who's allowed to be shy. Well nameless lady, how would you like to get out of here, grab some ice cream, and take in a movie? I'm Dale by the way. I'd like the Dale. How about you call me D? And with that we charted a course which found us living together eight months later. D was studying to pass the bar and become an attorney. Once I got my bachelor's degree, I found a way into a management position at a distribution center. We rented a house in a typical bedroom community. Every once in a while we'd take a weekend vacation to Las Vegas. Life seemed pretty good even though neither of us was talking marriage. I have to admit I was oblivious to what was going on. Having accepted an invitation to a neighborhood meet and greet, I was wandering around the backyard. D couldn't get the afternoon off so I went stag. The only thing I really had to avoid was our nymphomaniac neighbor Bevan. She is a shameless flirt and makes D furious the way she openly attempts to bed me. I don't care what you do, but I better not hear that you spent five seconds alone with Bevan. Got it mister? Yes sir, or ma'am, or dear. Got it as I saluted D. I was masterful at avoiding Bevan. The new couple, Randy and Harley, were dressed quite casually. In Harley's case that meant that she was braless, and I seriously doubt there were panty lines showing against her mid-thigh skirt. She pressed her boobs against everyone, men and women. Randy didn't appear bothered by it at all. It seemed like the party was breaking up as several of the men hadn't been seen in a while. I figured I'd spent the required amount of time to satisfy whatever is acceptable at these types of events. He had just directed another guy into the house when I tapped Randy on the shoulder and bit him at you. You sure you have to leave Dale? Things are getting pretty exciting in the bedroom, if you know what I mean. Yeah I'm sure. Welcome to the neighborhood. Give my regards to Harley. Follow me through the house. You can leave through the front door. I walked with Randy and heard the sounds of sex. 
Randy was smiling ear to ear. We passed close enough to see a few men standing naked. You could hear Harley acting like a slut. I simply smiled and kept walking. If I'd only known. I would have been better prepared for the shitstorm later that evening. You miserable fuck. How could you? From one seriously agitated D. How could I what? Have sex with our new neighbor. Bevan said every man at the party jumped on top of her. Not true. I avoided Bevan and never saw Harley after the first hour or so. I did hear her as I was leaving. Ask Randy, I did not partake. That's not what Bevan said. She said you came out of her bedroom with a big fucking smile on your face. Take your shit to the guest bedroom. You're not sleeping with me tonight. That night was the beginning of the end. Things never returned to normal. I learned that Randy and Harley were swingers and they were recruiting new friends with some free samples that afternoon. After two months of living together but alone, I told Dee that things better improve or I'd move out. In hindsight, if we were eventually headed for a breakup, now was the best time. We'd had a few talks about possibly getting married and starting a family. Not having children would make this a clean break. The only thing that shocked me was how quickly Dee's love had turned to hate based solely on the word of someone she despised. If she was that mentally unstable I guess I should thank my lucky stars that we split when we did. Try telling that to my heart. I found an apartment and moved out. I wasn't shocked when Bevan left a message on my cell phone asking if I'd like to get together with her. I never called her back. That's all I need is a manipulative nymphomaniac. I'd been on my own for almost a year when my heart got an unwelcome jolt. I'd never bothered to remove Dee's contact information from my cell phone. When it buzzed on Saturday night and caller ID flashed Dee, I knew not what to do. My stomach was cramping, my heart was racing, and my palms were sweaty. What in the hell does she want? The easiest thing to do was to let it go to messages. Hi Dale. I was wondering if you would like to get together sometime. I owe you an apology and I'd like to do it in person. I'm done with her. Why should I give her the satisfaction of clearing her conscience? I still have strong feelings for her but knew better than to restart that relationship. I texted back no thank you. But you elicited why not. I could have said because I hate you. I could have said you're not worth my time. I could have said you're fucking crazy. Instead, I said nothing. Sunday morning I found a series of texts from D. If I wouldn't meet with her, she was going to spill her guts in text messages. On and on they went. Apparently Randy and Harley videotaped their meet and greets. A divorce lawyer caught wind and sued. The video analysis, introduced in divorce court, detailed who was involved. As I had stressed that day, I was not one of them. Now she believes me and is sorry. Although I had not been keeping track of Dee since our breakup, I decided to give her some of her own medicine. Doesn't matter now. From what I hear, you've become one of the easiest pieces of ass in the neighborhood. I know I could never live with a woman who gives it up like that. Have a nice life Dee. Hey, that's not true. Who'd you hear that from? I am not a slut. Let her fume. I didn't respond. My phone started ringing within a few minutes and I finally powered it off. Talk about hitting a nerve. I should have been keeping statistics. Easily a couple dozen texts and several voicemails, all unanswered. She desperately wanted to protect her reputation. How could I even begin to think that was true? The texts and calls stopped after two weeks. I'm sorry. I get it. I made a wild accusation that you couldn't possible defend. I finally realized that you had done the same thing to me. I threw away a good man and I regret it. I leave you alone. I still love you though. D. A week later I decided to meet D for drinks. Her last text message slowly melted my resolve. Part of me was saying run. The idiot in charge was assuring me that he had everything under control. D went all out for our meeting. She'd always dressed conservatively, but the push-up bra and low-cut blouse highlighted her very ample boobs. Her choice of bras was done with the intention of showing a sliver of her areolas. The hint of hardening nipples was hard to ignore. My eyes are up here, Dale was said with a smirk on her face. And they are very sexy too D. You went all out to make sure I saw these beauties, so it would have been rude of me to ignore them. How are you? Hopeful. How are you? Do soon to tell. What can I get you to drink? White wine. That hasn't changed. Do you think the skirt is too short? You would think she'd have her legs together. Not the case in her all-out assault on my hormones. The sight of any woman's bare inner thigh is a turn-on. Probably for church but about average for a bar like this. Come here often. First time. I was hoping to find someone like you. How about you, are you a regular here? Yeah, this is my favorite pickup spot. That caused a flinch. I smirked back, touche. I have reason to believe that you are faithful to a fault. Am I intruding on your current girlfriend? Did I mention that part of me was saying run? I had enjoyed a few one night stands since our breakup. There was no way I was ready for a relationship, even with D. I decided to be honest. No. 
My heart doesn't trust any woman at this point. It could be months or years before I can expose myself to that kind of pain again. These eyes missed it immediately, I'm so sorry Dale. Could I interest you in a friends with benefits thing to keep me on your mind? She knew she had me. I was twisting uncomfortably in my chair as my heart unpressed painfully against my jeans. I need to pick up some condoms first. She flinched again and started, but you don't, you okay, your place or mine. Let's do your place. That way I can leave when I need to. I paid the tab, then tore off to the drug store. Dee was wearing a robe when she let me in. Once my coat was off she put her arms on my shoulders, letting the robe fall open. She was naked and oh so inviting. I caressed her boobs and flicked her nipples. Her juices were leaking down her legs. I'm your play toy. You tell me what you want and I'll make it happen. By the time the sun rose I'd filled all three holes. A first for me. Plus 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 plus. He was everything a man could have wanted. Sensual, passionate, attentive, and patient. It wasn't enough. I'd been taking advantage of her charms at least twice a week. B, e, I know your intent is to get us back together. I'm sorry. Whatever we used to have is not there for me. Maybe I need some help to figure out why I've become so emotionally detached. I don't want to mislead you. The sex is great, your attitude is wonderful, but I just can't seem to find that loving feeling again. Dale, I've noticed. You're not the same person I knew before. I'm willing to give you more time to find yourself. I still blame myself for doing this to you. I stopped calling, but Dee didn't. She kept me informed of things in her life. Even though I declined, she kept offering for me to spend the night. It wasn't just Dee that I wasn't interested in. I resigned myself to the fact that I needed help to shake this depression. Dave, my counselor, was making pretty good progress and convinced me to invite Dee to join in a few sessions. He wasn't gentle with Dee. How she never really committed to trusting me sent her home crying. She started her own private counseling sessions. Slowly we resumed our friends with benefits arrangement and I think we might get serious again. I'd been divorced from Celeste for five years when she left a message for me at my parents' house. I waited a few days to call her back. There was no reason for me to ever talk to her again, but curiosity won out. Celeste, this is Dale. You called. Thanks for calling me back. Wendell and I have something very important to talk to you about and we were wondering if we could meet. We'd buy dinner if you want. I agreed to meet at the cafe near where I live. Dee joined me. Celeste was escorted by a man who she introduced as her husband Wendell. She was dressed quite nicely and was very outgoing. After our orders were taken she pulled out an envelope. Dale, I have a confession and then a plea for you. When I delivered the baby, while we were still married, I put Wendell down as the father. We've discovered that he isn't. You are. He squeezed my hand. My heart started racing and I could feel my stomach tighten. Aren't you going to say anything? What's your plea slut? Wendell Jr. needs a bone marrow donor and I was hoping you'd agree to do that for him. I've got the DNA test showing that Wendell isn't the father. The only other person who could be the father is you. The DNA test and the doctor's report on Wendell Jr. are in this envelope. You need to be tested to see if you are compatible, but since I'm not, they tell me you would almost certainly be. I was donating to the sperm bank long before we met. I could have a few, maybe even dozens, of children I've sired but never met. What makes you think your child is more deserving of my time and body parts than they are? He was conceived naturally. Doesn't that count for anything? Not in my book. Your child is no different than any of the others I may have sired. I have absolutely no emotional attachment to any of them. If one was delivered by a cum filled cheating lying slut so be it. If that's all you've got then I've got to get back to work. Please don't call my wife names came from Weasel. Celeste squeezed his hand, ignore him Wendell. We can't control him if he needs to stoop to that level. Looking at Wendell I continued, tell me Weasel, have you tapped her butt yet? I didn't get to until I found her with her lover's cock buried deep in her ass. After that I was allowed. I didn't much care for it. She's not very good at that either. Wendell, it's not true. I never cheated on him. There was no lover. He's lying. He never did my ass. He burst out laughing and started mocking Celeste, I never cheated. We dick, with you it wasn't cheating. Celeste was practically screaming fuck you bitch. Dale how can you turn your back on your son? Tell you what slut. I'll see if there's a way to check whether any of my unknown children are ill. If there's one out there and their mother isn't a lying cheating slut, I'll help that child. Work for you. I pulled Dee to her feet started walking towards the door when Wendell spoke Dale, we need your help. Talk to us. What's it going to take? That my son's birth certificate change to show me as his father and then change his name to Daryl Thomas Solomon. Do that and I'll see if I'm compatible. Don't bother me again until you do that. I left as they were beseeching me to stay and negotiate. He wasn't sure how to break the ice watch a thinking Dale. But you're a much nicer woman than that bitch. 
Are you thinking of helping the boy? His name is Daryl. You just can't seem to trust me can you? I'm sorry. If I trust you on this will you marry me? It could get ugly. I ask you a question. I pondered my options. We'd made a lot of progress in therapy and I really did love her. What the hell. Yes, I will marry you if you help me with this. Can you draw up the name change and birth certificate paperwork? I'd love to. The uninhibited sex that evening was the best it had ever been with D. She insisted that the first load be in her ass. She normally orgasms before I do anyway, so it's a win-win situation for both of us. The next day I had some things to do, but D had the paperwork delivered by courier. The instructions to Celeste and Wendell were to execute the papers before a notary then called to set up a follow-up meeting. Also included was a DNA testing kit so that I could determine if Daryl was in fact my child. It was another day before we met up with them again. Nice of you to join us today. Did you bring the executed paperwork? From D acting very professionally. Yes, it's in the envelope. Here's the DNA test swab from when, I mean Daryl. I chimed in, we will hold off on submitting this paperwork until all medical procedures have been completed. I have a sheet of questions for you to answer. We need to determine how medical expense payments will be handled. My research shows you have a two-year-old daughter as well. Yes, Audrey celebrated her second birthday last month. When would you get tested Dale? As soon as my counselor here tells me that things are in order. That night I gave D instructions for the paperwork I wanted prepared. This goes against my better judgment, but I trust you Dale. For our sake, I hope whatever you've got planned is not only legal, but succeeds. Have I told you how much I love you? Pretty soon you love me as much as I love you. Oh you wish. You'll never catch up to me mister. Another day passed and we were all gathered around a conference table. Thanks for joining us. I'm not so sure that I want to help. Celeste begged Dale please don't say things like that. He really needs your help as his condition has begun to deteriorate. Does Daryl like his sister Audrey? Yes. Does Audrey like her brother Daryl? Yes. It would be a shame to break them up. If you want me to do the bone marrow thing, then you will assign full custody of both children to me. It would be too stressful to break the kids apart. I don't think it would be a good idea for you to have visitation rights for the first two years. Let them get adjusted to their new parents. Wendell lost it, no fucking way am I letting you steal my daughter. Sorry weasel, you stole my kid. What's the difference? I didn't steal him. Celeste told me I was the father. Hard to believe isn't it? A coom filled lying cheating slut lied to you. Did you know she was married when you started fucking her? Wendell didn't respond. Come on shithead, answer the fucking question. Yes. I see. It's okay for you to steal another man's wife. Fine set of morals you have there. You two were meant for each other. You want me to help. Sign the kids over. D has the paperwork for you. Celeste was fighting back the sobs Dale, how could you be so heartless? Find a mirror slut. You'll see heartless staring back at you. Bring the executed documents, along with the kids, when you're ready to proceed. Wendell and Celeste were sobbing into each other's shoulders as Dee and I left the room. Dee was very quiet. This had greatly disturbed her. This is a side of you I never knew existed. You seem to have a lot of repressed anger. I'd had it. My voice started low, but I was shouting by the time I stopped. What makes you think that? I fall in love, get married, and then join the service to better my family. I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. What happens? I get my heart ripped out. You can relate to that can't you? Oh wait, no you can't because I did everything I was supposed to be doing. Was it enough? No. I get treated like shit and my heart gets ripped out again. Now they tell me that I have a son who was stolen from me. You can relate to that can't you? I didn't think so. You're right. I'm overreacting. What was I thinking? Let me take a deep breath and quit acting so childish. Maybe it's not such a good idea for us to get married. I started to get up when D went off on me. She was every bit as loud and animated as I'd been. Sit. You're not going anywhere. I'm sorry. I've been trying to make it up to you. I fucked up. I know it. You know it. I wasn't second guessing you. I was only trying to get you to talk to me. I guess I've succeeded. Maybe now you can get some closure. Yes, you've been shit on by Celeste and then by me. I agreed to trust you on this, but you have an advantage over me. I have no idea where the hell this is headed and what in the hell we're going to do with two kids. So excuse me all to hell if I seem concerned, but until you clue me in on your plans, I think I'm entitled. With tears in both of our eyes I responded, I'm sorry. You make a very good point. Grab your pencil and pad and let me tell you what I hope will happen. I outlined my next request. D perked right up. That night we tried to outdo ourselves in bed. I really wasn't convinced that Celeste and Wendell would capitulate. It only took two days before the children were delivered to Dee. I'd never seen two adults cry any harder. 
Lee and I took the kids down to the cafeteria and waited. About 15 minutes later I got word that Celeste was headed to the parking garage. We intercepted them, kids in tow. Audrey ran up to Celeste and Wendell, greeting them like long-lost friends. I thought you didn't want us to see them for two years. I never intended on filing those custody papers. I wanted you to prove how deeply you loved your kids. The documents are worded such that I could, up until their 18th birthday, file them with the court. If I ever find out that those kids have been abused, I will be at the courthouse to take them from you. But you're still going through with the medical thing. Nope, had myself tested the day after we first met. I'm as incompatible as possible. My blood type immediately disqualified me from being a donor for the boy. It also proves that I'm not Weasel Jr.'s father. You really were a slut all along weren't you? Wendell looked dazed and confused. Celeste shouted, that can't be. So you're a medical expert now too. I suggest you track down his real father or hope like hell someone pops up on the donor register. Epilogue. Due to privacy laws I don't know who saved Wendell Jr. But, he spent 11 weeks in the hospital before going home with Celeste and Wendell. D kept in touch as she has that desire that everything has a happy ending. I kept my promise and proposed to D. We, well mostly me, still have some issues to work out. Dave, our personal counselor, has spent more than a few sessions helping me overcome my pent-up anger. He helps D deal with me. Me and I have two girls. Celeste and Wendell tried two more times for a real Wendell Jr. Didn't happen. Wendell Jr. now has three sisters. Couldn't happen to a nicer couple. I have yet to find any of my sperm donated children, if they even exist. With all of the DNA matching sites, I think it's only a matter of time if they're out there. If I'm ever needed, I'll do whatever it takes, probably without all the hoopla this time. Me and I ran all of Celeste's paperwork through the shredder. I was just being an ass, which I think I was entitled to be. Thank you for listening to this story. Please press the like button if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video. Thank you.